Okay, let's get into the demo. Here we have JBoss Developer Studio, and the first thing you'll notice, hopefully, is JBoss Central. This is kind of our dashboard that kind of shows you how to get started quickly, and that's really our purpose for it. Give you news and information, give you lots of great examples, give you some uh, ways to launch your project development right off the bat, and of course give you some links to good documentation, and I'd also encourage you to check out the screencast here also. So just bear in mind that you know you can get started very quickly by using JBoss Central, but you can also add on tools with JBoss Central by clicking on the Software Update tab here. So on the Software Update tab, you'll find things like Android Development Tools, Google Web Toolkit Tools, Spring Tools if you're a Spring-based developer. Also, if you're interested in things like eGet, uh, SVN, uh, a lot of those are right here, uh, and you can kind of check those off and get those installed. So we've gone through the process of validating these various third-party tools. You can bring them right into your development environment. And of course, if you have, uh, if you work with JBoss Soul Platform and BRMS, etc., you'll see those listed here depending on your configuration. Back on the Getting Started tab, though. Uh, the first thing I want to show you is these archetypes. So these are actually Maven archetypes, these bottom six. And what that basically means is you can lay down a Maven project with a single click. And that's an incredibly nice thing to do because if you've had to set up a Maven project before, it can be fairly challenging to get all your dependencies correct. And what we've done is we've packaged up dependencies uh, and built little sample projects so you can build a generic EE web project, a generic EE6 ear project, uh, HTML5 project using JaxRS and HTML5. Uh, rich faces, of course, rich faces extends the jo uh, Java server faces programming in, uh, environment, giving you additional components. And then we have the Spring MVC project based on the Java E6 backbone and Google Web Toolkit Google Web Toolkit project, taking advantage of our Array technology. Let's drill down on a couple of these uh, and give you some more insight into them. So this is Java E6 web project. I've already clicked on the button there and. Uh, generate this project. And one of the things we've done with all of these projects, all of these archetypes, is we've implemented the exact same sample application. And all it does is allow you to enter new members into the database and you get you a list of members at the bottom there. And they all basically work the same. So this is the HTML5 one. You can see it basically works the same as the plain old Java E6 one. And I even have the Spring one over here. Let me go ahead and open that up in the browser. So you can see what it looks like. It basically looks the same. So you can see that's the Spring MVC one. So the idea is that you can see all these different programming models and make a determination for yourself which programming model do you want to work with. And of course, we wanted to provide you with the correct way to set up a Maven project. So that was very critical here. Uh, drilling down on this E6 one, you can see I have a, my POM XML. I'll open that up. We have the Maven tooling built right into the environment here. You can see there's the group ID, artifact ID, and the version for that particular uh, Maven project. You can see all the dependencies. You can look at the dependency hierarchy. You can even look at the effective POM. And for those of you who want to go crazy and just edit the POM XML directly, you can. And you can see right in here exactly how we did the magic. Uh, look at the BOM versions we used. And then if you want to add additional capabilities, you can by just simply adding new dependencies to this. So we believe we've provided numerous examples of how to get the right dependencies you want for your Maven-based project. If it's not in one of the mainline archetypes up here, it's probably in one of the project examples down here. And then we have even we have even more examples if you look at the quick starts to ship with the various products that we offer. So we encourage you to check all those out. And you can see there's a bunch of them here also. So one thing I want to show you here is the Java E6 programming model. So if I go into um, the model, I'm going to click on the member.java here. And you can see this is a POJO, plain old Java object, with some JPA annotations associated with it. I have at entity, at ID, at generated value, my personal favorites, at size, at pattern, at not, not null. Um, and you can see there's things like I want digits here for the phone number, I want an email address. So what you've done is you've uh, applied these Hibernate Validator or Bean Validation annotations to the POJO. This means it protects itself. Whenever you try to persist this POJO, basically take this object, this member object, put it back in the database, pushing it through the object relational mapping layer, it will provide, it will execute these validations for you automatically, and you don't have to push these uh, validations all throughout the various business logic apps, aspects of your application. So that's important to note that that's a new Java E6 programming model. Uh, you can basically annotate a POJO, that's your persistence architecture, and then you can put these uh, simple validation annotations on there as well. Let me also show you the controller for this one. This is again a JSF, Java E6 based application. Let me open him up, and you can see some interesting things in here like at inject, that is a CDI or context dependency injection, and at produces. 
Uh, so these aspects basically show you how to, um, this demo right here shows you how to do a dependency injection directly into this component. You can also see the app produces saying, okay, whenever uh, this method also produces a new member, and therefore if it's injected into something else, the member is now available there. You can also see where the register is, okay? And you can see member registration dot register. Let me hit F3 here. And up here you can see that's where it's injected. And I hit F3 there. You can see how member registration is defined as, as stateless. And then of course add inject and inject. And you can see where the uh, member event comes into play here. And you can see where the register method is defined. And all it's really doing is an entity manager dot persist. So there's not a lot of business logic to this application. And hopefully that's the point you're, you're seeing here. I have my simple data model. Um, Pojo defined. I have a controller which is essentially sitting behind my JSF page. When the user hits the registration button to pop in a new member, uh, we'll go back over here. This is a Spring ABC one, but they all work the same. When they, when they enter the e, uh, name, email, and phone number, it's going to fire the, off the uh, register uh, invocation with the member object and then, of course, persist it. And so that's a key thing there. And I'll show you one other aspect of this uh, Java E6 application, and that's a JAXRS endpoint. So also new in Java E6 is JAXRS with this ability to do a at path and then you can do things like at get right here and at produces and what that basically means is whenever a new get request comes in for this URL as defined by the path then I will in this case when you say uh, hit the members with a get command an HTTP get you will then get an XML payload of all the members in the database so all the members in the system in this case you can see where the entity manager create query is being used um, and of course we're just returning those results. So again a very simplistic programming model for setting a RESTful endpoint. So you can see there's a lot of new capability that's been added to Java E6 to make your programming life easier. Uh, a lot of things have been simplified when it comes to REST programming, database programming, even JSF programming, and we have the JSF aspects of this application down here. Let me go ahead and open that up. So here's the JSF component. Uh, you can With JSF you can use the uh, visual source preview option. Let me, I can navigate here, or if I can navigate down here, I can click here, and of course, I can come in here and edit. And I can say, Welcome to JBoss and OpenShift. Okay, and I can save that. And you can see that we're right away, we're making changes right here inside this application. There it is the name, email, phone number, where you put the information in, hit the register button. And this is standard JSF now. You can see. Um, you know, the various JSF syntax right here. Pretty straightforward stuff, nothing too fancy, but the nice thing about it is it does show you the simplified programming model associated with JSF2, Java E6, CDI, the JAXRS background, uh, and of course the new capabilities there. So I want to kind of show you, uh, let me see, let's go ahead and deploy that uh, application. Let's, so I'm going to right click over here and say add remove. Um, and I can remove it from the local server. So I'm deploying it to the local server first. I'm, I'm gonna, well, I'm undeploying it in this case. So I've undeployed it. I can redeploy it. You know, there's lots of ways to to deploy and undeploy. Let's just go ahead and add them back. Um, so I can interact with my local server. And I want to do this to kind of test my application before I get into the mode of of actually going out there and um, and and pushing it up to my OpenShift environment. So here I am, there's the application. Welcome to JBoss and OpenShift. And let's see here, I can add myself to this system. And let's see, uh, dun, 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 get the information in there. It's always hard to type when people are watching you. Okay, and hit register if I got the right number in there. And let's see here, there it is. So there's Burr and John Smith, who's the default. So that's an example of me interacting with the final application. And you saw the, the simple business logic. Let me also show you the HTML5 archetype, what it generated. Okay, it's very similar to what we had in pure Java E6. It also has a JPA member object, like just like we had before. Okay, it also has a REST endpoint. The distinction between this REST endpoint and the one you saw earlier is that it not only has the get, it has a post. Because typically with an HTML5 uh, client side application, this is using HTML5 with jQuery and jQuery mobile to give you a mobile representation of the application. But it's going to interact with a JAXRS endpoint instead of a controller. So this JAXRS endpoint um, might have a post. So I can do a post here and it consumes JSON and produces JSON. And again, those are simple annotations. You go in there and mark the methods of your application with get, 
put post or delete to represent the various rest commands or HTTP verbs and then now I can say post create new member and you can see what the process it goes through again it has a registration if I navigate to that that's injected member registration same logic as before um, so the same business logic the distinction being coming through that rest endpoint versus working through a JSF controller okay so that kind of gives you a quick and uh, a quick feel for what the differences are between the applications.